So we're just really privileged uh, to have him come and speak for us this morning. I want you to give him a big crossway welcome as he comes today. A little disappointed seeing you putting that tie on there. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to tell a story about that one. Because of those of you who knew my dad and, uh, you know, how he was and how he raised me, you know, he wanted you to wear a tie. But I remember him preaching. I remember the early days of him preaching. I'm talking about he would get to preaching. He would be nothing but sweat. I mean, his shirt would be sweaty. And halfway through the sermon, the coat jacket would come off and the tie would come off. And it was easy because he had one of these clip-on ties. <laughs> so, so my tie um, will come off out of respect for the pastor again. <laughs> I respect my dad and then I respect the pastor. So, so there's the tie and uh, you've seen me wear it. Uh, Dad, you, I know you're proud of me because this was your tie. This is one of his ties. Uh, we got one for the pastor, but uh, he didn't get anointed with it, so that was, that was his problem. But it is good to be here. It is always good to, to minister uh, what God wants you to minister. And uh, I was telling your pastor, this sermon, uh, when he's talking about stars aligning and all that, um, this sermon was given to me. First time I walked in this building, you have to excuse the tears. I go through this every time, and that's all right with me. If you've never seen a big guy cry, now you can write it down in your book that you saw a big guy cry. But it's the way I do. My wife can tell you, I preach very few sermons without God moving, making me cry, making me humble, <laughs> the way it is. But uh, he gave me this sermon. The first time I step foot in this building. And it's like, okay, I'll preach it. So I thought, okay. You know, so I called Brother Dennis and said, uh, I'm going to be in town. Uh, if you need somebody, to, I'd like to preach for you some. He said, well, you know, this was going on. Okay, not a problem. God's timing is God's timing. So I called him again, said, I'm going to be in town. And uh, he said, well, I'm finishing up this series that I need to finish up. And all, okay, you know, God's timing, God's timing. And uh, so if you're here today, there's a reason. It's not me. Now, I did have a friend of ours from Jackson drive up uh, to be with us, uh, Sister Lindy, uh, driving up to, from Jackson just to be, well, she's actually visiting family and didn't know we were even coming here, but we, we'll claim it. Uh, so, and my daughter's here from Atlanta area. So, you know, they just come all over to hear me preach. So, so, but if you're here from this church, this is special for you. Not because of me, because of God. And you have to take, you'll see at the end, this is going to get very interactive. Oh, do I have to do something? Don't have to, but you're going to want to. You're going to want to by the time this is over with, I guarantee you. But we'll get started uh, in Joshua. Joshua, third chapter, we're going to see. We're going to go to the fourth chapter. But in the third chapter, we see that Joshua is, God's preparing for Joshua and the children of Israel to go over. Uh, and they'd already sent the spies out, and the spies came back, told them about the land. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going over there. Uh, on with that part. But we see that Joshua is getting the people ready to go across uh, Jordan, and they're going to take what God had promised them. Now, we see here that Joshua, there's a couple of things that's going on here. Joshua was told by God what was going to happen. You're going to take, you're going to have the priest take the ark on their shoulders as they're supposed to, and they're going to step into the water. And when they step into the water, the waters are going to subside. Then you're going to have the people step across. And then you're going to have 12 people, one from each tribe, that will have a special duty to perform. Now, the reason I say this is interactive, and the, one of the things you need to understand here is this represents what God wants to do. 
Now, I want you to understand something before we go on. What each role is about, okay? You have somebody that is in leadership, all right? You have a person, Joshua, who's in leadership that God spoke to to tell him how things would run. Now, you had other people, the priests, that were to carry the ark on the shoulder. Joshua did not carry the ark on his shoulder, okay? It required other people from the children of Israel to carry the ark on the shoulder. They were designated individuals, okay? Then the other part, you had them doing their part to get the other people and children of Israel get to going over Jordan to start getting ready to take the land that God had promised them. So you had all these people doing different things. Then there were 12 other people that he chose and he said, now this is what you're going to do. You're going to take some rocks and you're going to take these stones out of the water and you're going to carry them on your shoulders and you're going to go across Jordan. And then we're going to set them up at another place. And so here's what you have. You have many people taking part in doing this. Joshua, God didn't say, Joshua, I want you to get that ark on your shoulders. I want you to carry it across. Stand there and say, come on, come on, get over here. And then you're going to carry the ark across, then we're going to bring it back and make you pick up stones and all this stuff. You had, the priest did not pick up the stones. It was 12 people that they decided. So do you understand what I'm saying here? You have a part. You have a part. Not just to sit there, but to take the part that God says for you to take. Brother Dennis has a part that he has to take. The leadership in the church has a part that they have to take. The board, the teachers and all that, that they have to take. And so everybody has something they need to do. Got that? Anybody doesn't get that? If you don't get it, raise your hand and the person next to you will thump you on the head and say, what is wrong with you? But that's okay. We, we need to have like the old time where they had the sticks and they'd wake up the kids and all that stuff. You just thump on your head. But, uh, but this is what went on. Now, we're talking about the, the stones that they took out of the river, Jordan. Now, now I like to go back and think of of um, you ever go hiking someplace or you ever drive in the country someplace and all you see is a chimney? All you see is a chimney, a fireplace, nothing else. It was an old, we call it an old home place. And do you ever sit there in amazement and just think, I wonder what went on. Wonder what that house looked like. I wonder what kind of stories were told around that fireplace. I wonder who lived here, how long they lived here, how many children they had, what kind of meals they cooked on that fireplace, or was it just to keep the place warm? You ever do that? Am I the only one that does that? And you, you kind of wonder, you see these old places, you're shaking your head. Do you mean that I'm the only one that does that, or you do it too? Okay. All right. But the stones that you see in the fireplace, the stones that they brought across Jordan, they weren't anything until they had a purpose, until they were designated to have a purpose. This stone was gonna make this fireplace come to life. These stones were gonna make this come to life. Now, when everything was gone, everything was gone, the fireplace stood. The stones stood. There was a memorial to that home place. And when they brought the stones across Jordan, out of Jordan, and took them on to Gilgal, and they were set up there, Gilgal meaning a circle, so I'm thinking maybe they were set around, I don't know. But they were set up in such a way, and this is on the fourth, ver fourth chapter, the 19th verse, and the people came up out of Jordan 
on the 10th day of the first month and camped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. And those 12 stones which they took out of Jordan, now they just didn't pick them up on the other side. That was out of Jordan. This is the area they walked across that God is miraculous backing up the waters again for them because the power of God, which was represented by the Ark of the Covenant, was standing in the midst of that, and nothing's going to overshadow the power of God. And so they took the stones from where the priests stood and brought them over. So they took the 12 stones, which the Joshua pitched in Gilgal, and he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When... Now, this is a when, this is not an if. When children, your children, shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean these stones? What mean these stones? Then, there's a when and a then. Then you'll let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. <laughs> Can't you? Can't you envision that? You tell your kids stories about you growing up, you know, and all the hardships, you know, walking to school uphill both ways in the snow and 90 degree weather, you know, all that stuff. Um, but you tell your kids these stories about what it was like when you were a kid. And then you remember sitting around, your grandparents would tell you stories. And, and uh, one of the, the uh, a few years ago, we'd have the Holtzclaw family reunions in Illinois, you know, where dad and, and his siblings grew up. And uh, so one year we had them get together because we knew we wouldn't have them with us forever. And we had the siblings and all, they, they would sit, they would have a place to sit and had them tell stories of what was going on. If, now, you, if you have a chance to do that, do it now before they're gone because you won't get those stories once they're gone. And there was funny because my dad's oldest brother, or older brother, his wife sat there shaking her head and she goes, she I've never heard some of these stories before. And they'd been married for 50, 60 years. I don't know how many years they'd been married. But uh, they'd been married a long time. She'd never heard these stories. But when they started recanting, there was my dad, and there was my uncles, and there was my aunt sitting there. And they were back to being a kid, relaying these stories. Can you imagine? So when these people were talking about when your children asked this, can you imagine the kids' eyes, when they say, you see that river right there? That river backed up when the priest carried the ark in. And when that river backed up by the power of God, we don't know how he did it, but he did it. We walked everybody, and we're not talking about 10 people. Okay, we're talking about, what was it, 3 million or something like that? I forget how many. We're talking about a big bunch of people crossing over, and all of us crossed over on that. And we had some people take, from each tribe, take a stone. That's what these represent, is what God did for us at that time when he, we were needing him to make a way for us. Whew, can you imagine what their kid, can you imagine telling your kid that and their eyes getting this big like, you're lying, dad. And no, I'm telling the truth. This is what, that's what these stones are. You notice, and we we're talking about this, you know, they come out of the river, so they're, they're a different breed of stone, I guess, if you want to say it. They're, they look different. They've been, they've been, the water's gone across, and they had to carry them, and I'm sure some of them probably were a little slick to carry, but they had to carry them on their shoulders, and they were not the small little things either. So here we are with these people. They carry them across, and then you'll say to your kids uh, that saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land for the Lord your God, because we're telling our kids he needs to be your God. The Lord, your God, dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did the Red Sea when he dried that before us until we were gone, gone over. That, this is the reason, listen to it now, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God, or respect the Lord your God, forever. It was a tangible thing for them to, to have there that would bring questions about what is this about. Now, if you're not presenting yourself in such a way 
where people wonder what's going on in your life that's different, then maybe you need to reexamine how you are showing and what you have to represent how good God has been to you. Now, I need to show hands on this. This is the first part of the interactive. How many of you has God done something special to you, for you, ever? Show hands. We got some that haven't, so we're going to pray for you later. <laughs> we'll lay hands on you until you run out the door or something. But everybody, whether you know it or not, God has done something. He's, he's healed you. He's helped with financial difficulties. He's helped with marital problems. He's helped with family issues that have gone on. God has done something for you. He has rolled back the waters so you could get through this problem. Now, again, these stones were taken up. They weren't taken up once they got over. They were taken up in the midst. So, there are things that you can testify about now that you haven't gone through all the way yet. You can pick up the stone while you're being delivered out of something, which means you're still having the problem. The issue has not been resolved. Whatever's going on, but you can still pick up a testimony of the power of God while you're going through something because we trust in God. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. No matter what's going on, I'm going to trust God. And whatever the result is, it's because God wants it to be that way. God, if I do my part and keep trusting in God and give it over to his hands, then guess what? He gets the glory. Take it out of your hands. Quit trying to be Quit trying to be God. Quit trying to do his job. You're making it harder. You're getting in his way sometimes. <laughs> You're not ready to be God. You weren't designed to be God. You were designed to be you, and God worked through you. And then it, would, it said in the New Testament, it's talking about you know, the promise that God gives you. What was the promise? So you could have the power to be witnesses for him. That's what you're supposed to be, is a witness for God. Not the deliverer, not the one. And we get a lot of people, get a lot of other people in trouble because you get somebody, I could, if I prayed for somebody that had cancer, they go back to the doctor and the doctor says, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's happened. You don't have cancer anymore. First thing people want to do is bring all their cancer friends to me. Am I, am I right? You're, you're going to idolize the man <clears throat> that prayed rather than God the healed? No, I don't want that. And God doesn't want that. He wants the glory out of this. So when we look at this, we see that the stones and the, were representing the power of God that has to do with how he brought you out of something. How he helped you out. Do you understand me? Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. God has, re, has restored you. He's healed you. He's brought things to pass that you couldn't do on your own. And you should be amazed and stand back and give him the glory, understanding the power and the might of God because he's the one that is mighty. Now, what does this mean to us? Or I should say to you that are part of this church. What is this all about? Now, now come on, give me, give me a break. Yeah, great. Yeah, you just got stoned or something like that. I don't know. What does it mean to you? This is what it's going to mean to you. That what you have is the ability to, for a tangible item to represent your miracle or the miracles that are occurring to you. And some of you've gotten it already. Some of you know where I'm going with this and some of you are just 
you know, you acting like you got an IQ three points higher than a rock. But here's what you're going to do. You see all these things down there? See all these things back here? Okay. They're stones that are going to represent you. Anybody watch the series Heartland? You watch that series Heartland? It's, a, it's about a, based in Canada. And there's a girl that is, you know, she's got this special ability with horses. And yeah, you bring a horse and within minutes she's got it taken care of and all this stuff. You know, I don't know that much about them, but that's what she does. She's got this special ability that she learned from her mom, and so she can take care of horses. But the one part that, about that show is that the main house there has this fireplace, okay? Those of you who watch it, has a fireplace. And everybody in the family has a stone in that fireplace somewhere. When you're married into the family, you get to have a stone. When somebody was born into the family, there was a stone that was picked out. That is their stone. That represents them. And so as the family grows, the more stones get named. Now this morning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a chance <laughs> You get to name your stone. Now, don't bring a magic marker up here unless Pastor says you can bring one up and write on it. He didn't. <laughs> so leave the magic markers there. But what I want you to do is start looking down here. Now, if, there's plenty of stones around, and there's some up here if you need them, but wherever you want. I want you to look at this stuff right here, these things, and I want you to look at them, and I want you to start thinking I want that one to represent my miracle. No reason why, except you just were drawn to it in a way. Just look at that. Don't look at me, look at these things. Look at these rocks that are, that are being represented here, these stones. Look at them and think about, I want that, every time I look at that, I want to be reminded of what God did in my life. Now these stones were brought in as a reminder again to describe the glory and the majesty of your God. So when people ask, what are these stones about? We could tell them the last thing to go in a building is the stones. The fireplaces still stand when the rest of it's rotted down. So look at these. Now, what if I pick the same one as somebody else? Get over yourself. There's plenty of stones around, and it's okay. If you have the same stone somebody else picked, that's okay. If that's your stone, if that's what reminds you of something, there were only 12 stones to represent the millions of people from Israel. So don't worry about it. Don't let Satan get into that part of you. Just, just, just get over that. Find you a stone, and you're going to pick it. Now, I can tell you, the one stone I'm going to name is right down here, there's a big stone. That's going to be the Roy stone. You know why it's there? The Brother Roy stone. Because that represents my dad. Why that? Because it's next to the stairs. He's always was one that would take you, and Brother Dennis can testify this, and the rest of you who, who got Brother Roy a lot of times. He would try to take you from this step to that step. He wanted to support your steps in getting to the level you needed to be at. That's why I claim it as a Brother Roy stone. I think you can see the one I'm talking about down here, the bigger, bigger stone toward the top here. So when you see that, when you look at it, every time you look at it from now on, I, I'm, I'm hoping you think of my dad. 
I'm hoping you think of what he did in this church the short time he was here for the church, for the pastor. The miracle of him being here, coming over to this church and being in the place that God set him to do the things that God needed him to do. I don't know all those things. I know he did in my life, but I don't know all the things that he's done for you and how he touched each one of your lives and for the church. And Brother Dennis can explain a lot of that, and he has uh, in the past. His memorial, he explained a lot of it. But I want to take, and I know this surprises a lot of you, but I want to shut up. And my wife's about to faint. Somebody revive her back there. Because this is your time of interaction. Now I'm going to turn this over to your pastor. And I'll let him pick out his stone and tell why, you know, a quick testimony and, and of what's going on. He will give you direction from here on out in this service. This is your service. This is your church. These are your miracles. This is representing the power of God. When you bring a visitor in, when you talk to your grandchildren or your children are saying, you see this rock right here? Walk up to it, touch it. You see that one? That represents this, this, and this. Now, how great of an intro did I get today with these songs? I mean, how great is our God? This is what we're talking about. How great thou art. This tells you that the, all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty and you might fear the Lord your God forever. Now you have a choice this morning. You can claim a stone for you every time you walk in here, you see that. And that gives you something tangible to look at, to worship God about. But let me give you a little warning. If you don't, and if you don't worship him, Jesus said, if they don't worship me, I can call these stones and they can start worshiping me. Now, now I know that's a dangerous thing to say in Missouri because Missouri is the show me state. And some of you teenagers or some of the people, young ones are going to sit back and go, oh, I got to see this. I ain't doing it because I want to see them rock. Don't do that, you know. But God can get his message across. You get a chance right now. Right now, you get a chance. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Dennis. And uh, I'm going to give him the mic and let him pick out his stone or his wife to tell him which stone to pick out. And he's got it from here. You guys, this is yours now. This is your church. This is your representation. Man, thank you, Brother Daniel. It's a great thought. You know, when we have to sometimes see things and really see things to realize what it represents. I know, you know, Sweetie and I, a lot of times we've lived in our house for 25 years. You know, we built our house and we live in it every day and don't think too much about it. But every once in a while, we'll be sitting on our front porch and we'll just be looking around. And Sweetie, every now and again, she'll say, you know, we've got a really nice place. I said, yeah, we do. And she said, and she'll always say, God has been so good to us. It's when you look around at the tangible things that you can put your hands on that represents God's faithfulness. Just like those stones. Brother Daniel, thank you. I love this thought. Those stones that stood there and it was something different. They could, they could tell those rocks wouldn't be there. Most rocks on land are going to be jagged. The rocks you take out of a raging river are going to be smooth. It was something that caught their attention that, you know, when they went into the, and I'm not going to try to preach this, uh, another half of his message. I'm, I'm saying this to build up to my stone. But when they got across that river, the battle wasn't over. The battle had just begun. I mean, they, God had brought them through the desert and across the promised land, but now they had to fight all of those nations who were already there in order to get their property. God said, this is your property. You got to go kick these people off of it. That's ultimately what happened. So there was a lot of battles and a lot of hardships, and I'm sure there were times that the children of Israel couldn't see themselves going forward anymore. It's just getting too hard, and maybe we want to, we'd have been better off to stay over on the other side. But every once in a while, when the battle got hard going forward, they could see those stones, that memorial that reminded them, yeah, but God brought us across that river. 
right? You know, God brought us across the desert. It was a reminder. God's faithfulness in the past is a reminder to us that God's going to be faithful in the, in the going forward. Amen? Amen. Because he doesn't leave his people. He didn't bring him to the brink of the Red Sea and say, well, there you go. I brought you this far. Let's see how far you can get on your own. He's faithful to the end, to the very end. And so this morning as I'm sitting there, of course, I had a head start because he had told me kind of ahead of time what he was going to do here. And I was looking at these stones and there was only one stone that I could pick. And it's this one right here, the very smallest one at the bottom, because I truly feel like I am the least of these the least among you. I dare not try to take a stone at the top. Jesus is the cornerstone, the Bible said. He's the most important stone in any construction, any life. And I'm insignificant in and of myself. But that stone represents for me in the past the times that God has, first of all, when he saved me. You know, sometimes we've, I've been saved for really saved, serving the Lord for 25 years, and I take that for granted sometimes. Sometimes I stop and I look at the cross and I say, but God's been faithful, amen? God has been so good to me. He died on that cross for me, and so I look back, and so many times the way God has ministered to me and he's met my needs, I look around, I see this whole building, and I can't believe it, right? Brother Roy was one of those ones, he said, going, taking us to the next level because he's one, and I told you this in his memorial service, he's one of the reasons, if not the main reason, this church is here. I knew I needed to build a church and I was scared to do it, right? I was scared of the debt and scared, oh, a lot of times churches tear, you know, church building projects, tear churches apart. I had all these things running through my head. And Brother Roy came to my office one day, I got Roy'd. Brother Roy said, it's time that we had to talk. And he sat down, he said, it's time. And from that moment forward, we said, and look here, we are in a building that's just pert near paid off. Kelsey gets on to me for saying pert near, but it's pert near paid off. And so that stone to me represents what God has done in the past, but it also represents something that I need God to do for me. Amen. Something that personally, for me personally, that I still yet need God to do. And I'm, and I'm not going to share that. It's unspoken. It's personal. God knows what it is. But I know just as God has been faithful to me in the past, I know that God's going to carry me through and he's going to do what I need him to do going forward. Amen. So who's next? Who's next? Somebody looking at a stone. Jeff, come on up here. Give a testimony to... I am picking one of those broken stones on the top that DeMac knocked off our wall when he came and the pastor no longer allows him to put his speakers up here. He has to put them down there. And the reason I'm picking the broken stones because 15 years ago on the very first day that this church ever opened, I went to the altar. The very first one I ever went to the altar, I was a broken man. And God picked me back up and put me back together. And now I'm your assistant pastor. I'm your youth pastor. Um, I was broken didn't know it. You might look up there and not realize any of those are broken, but they fell off. They broke. We put them back together. We stuck them back up there and they're still there. And I was a broken man when I went over there 15 years ago and God picked me back up, put me back together. And I stand here today because God put me back together. That's excellent. Excellent. God's using him to build his kingdom right here. That old broken stone. Who's next? Yes, ma'am. I've been through the lonesome valley, but I've climbed the highest hill. <laughs> and I've known the joy of being in the center of God's will. From back there, I could see that this stone has dips and it has low places in it. But then the biggest part of the rock <laughs> is the highest part of the rock. And God has brought me through so much. And when I stand on this stage and I give him praise and glory, this is where I'm in the center of God's will. And I remember what all he's blessed me with. The Bible teaches us that we're made overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen. How many of you know the difference in a testimony and just a money? <laughs> Some people are great at giving the monies. But a testimony is when you've come through a test, 
right? You've come through a difficult, very difficult time, that river. They walked through that. God brought them through an impossible situation, and they endured that test, and it created a testimony, and that's, that's still in our life. We go through such hard, difficult times, but God brings us through, and it creates that testimony. When we tell about what God has done for us, number one, that increases our faith, but number two, it ministers to somebody else who might be going through what we're going through. Amen. This is my stone. This is uh, my stone of remembrance. I did a study one time on the two verses in Revelation. The one says you left your first love. The other one says you're neither hot or cold. And those two things to me said the same thing for the longest time. But I thought that can't be saying the same thing. When you're neither hot or cold, you don't take a stand for anything. It's just you just go with it, you know, and whatever the flow is, you go, go with it. And, but when you leave your first love, you've, you're distant from something, you know, that you have loved in the past. You're not as close to that as you used to be. And I was trying to study that out and the references took us took me back to a scripture where uh, God was talking to Israel, and He said, "I remember when your heart was mine, when there was no other idols, there was nothing else, but you were my people, and and I was the most important thing in your life. I remember that." And as I was studying that. I thought, you are never so far away that God doesn't remember that first time you walked up to an altar and you knelt down and you said, Father, forgive me because I've sinned against you and I want to ha have you in my life. And then life comes along. Things happen. Um, life happens and sometimes we step back and we get all those things on our mind and you you can take a marriage for example uh when you're first married and you got that honeymoon going on and boy everything's just great you know then there's a bill that you can't pay then there's something else that comes along then there's you know life happens but you kind of look at each other like, oh, but when you step back and you take a, ch a look at each other and you say, oh, I remember who you are. You're, when when uh, you kids left home, um, I looked at your dad one day and I thought, I know you. <laughs> I remember you. You're that guy that I I fell in love with. You're that guy that, that you know, we, we, built a home we built a life we built and now there's nothing really between there I, I hey i know you and that's the way god is god has a a remembrance of all of us that he remembers how we felt when we were espoused to him so to speak and he remembers that first day and he wants us to remember how that felt when he washed our sins away, when he took and, and lifted us up out of miry clay and, and set our feet on a solid rock. And he said, I'm able to make your feet stand. I, I can keep you from slipping, but just take time to return to me and remember who I am. Randy, come right on up. This kind of stinks because I'm kind of close to Jeannie here, and I don't like that. But, uh, you know, you want to get as far away from your mother-in-law as possible. But for some reason, this one here stuck out to me. I'm sitting there thinking, why did that one stick out to me? I thought, well, maybe it's kind of like me. I'm a little bigger, a little thicker, and light-skinned if you get up above where the sun's at all the time. <laughs> But anyway, I was sitting there thinking, that can't be it. What is it? And I thought, here's what it is, right down here. See how that's worn at the bottom? Corners wore off. 
the world will wear you away. And a lot of you know, some of you don't. I was 29 and a half years old before I started going to church and everything. So the world wore me pretty good. But God will come in and fill you in Amen. and make you whole again. So that's about all. That's good. That's, that's good. That's one of my favorites so far. That's really good. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I, I did a lot of pondering on mine in particular. And looking around, I only found one stone here that I say represents me. And not necessarily because of what it is, but really what's around it. This is the only one I can find that has got three supporting it underneath. And <laughs> I've been fortunate enough to have that. Um, one of those is going to be my Rose family that raised me. And the next one next to that is now my married family. And the last one down here is my other Indiana church family that I have that really got me through a hard time when I was out there for three months on my own. So those three that support me is what makes that me. Aaron, that's awesome, buddy. Really good. Hallelujah. They give me goosebumps. I'm a quiet person, so this is kind of hard for me, but I think it's worth sharing. So this stone right here is probably going to be my stone, and it's because um, it's underneath this, and it's not well seen. It supports this, and ever since I was a little girl, my calling has been to support ministry, support people who need encouragement, and um, I don't need to be the top. I don't need to be and leadership. What I need is to hold others up. And I still, um, I struggle with things myself. And sometimes what I need is to remember that my place is to call out to God and to get on my knees because when I'm obedient to God, then I can help others. Awesome. Believe me, those of us in leadership appreciate stones like you. I'd like to hear something from somebody under the age of 25. And they're all like, if I had a rock or if I had a stone, I'd throw it at you right now. You're not 25. Hey, we'll let you go. So my stone is this square because squares are perfect, and I am not, but God is. Oh, that's good. I like that. Look at all this. Look at all of you people. Look at all these good ideas. I keep hearing you people and think, why didn't I think of that? It's kind of scary. Um, I actually have two because I'm kind of a go big or go home person. Um, and all of you that know me know that. Um, I'm kind of like coach. You see this square here? From back there, it looks really perfect. But you see this one here that... Um, this side's got some highs, and then this one's kind of going down low. And that one's kind of me because um, I have had struggles over my life. And um, some of you that don't really know my story, um, my mom had me when she was 15 and turned 16 the month after. Um, so I have got a lot of pride um, because over the years I've tried to make myself look like that perfect stone. Um, but underneath, I'm not. And, um, you know, my brother died in May, T.R. Davis. Some of you know that and some of you don't. Um, we have the same father. So I'm learning um, to accept who I am and to embrace my sisters, my sister-in-law, and all my nieces and nephews. And um, I struggle with that. There's days that I am, like, gung-ho and, like, yes, this is amazing. I've got more people to love me and um, more people to love. And then there's days when the devil beats me down and he's like, you have all those people looking at you and now they're going to know that you're not as perfect as what you look like. And so I struggle with that daily. So I'm a perfectionist and God likes to chip that away. Very good. Very good. I didn't know we could pick two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm crying. Um, you came up and 
Miranda picked the exact stone that I was setting back there when you mentioned stones, and I picked this one right here because <clears throat> I know that God holds the whole world in his hand. He holds all the power for anything and everything. Everything that we see every day, all the wonders in the world, he created them, he holds them. So I picked that stone because I too am somewhat of a perfectionist. Um, like she said, we lost TR in May. And I thought as I was looking at that stone that it looks like a strong, almost perfect square stone but it's right next to the power outlet. And our power outlet is God. Every time I find myself weak and I'm struggling, I know where to go and where the main source is. So I picked the stone that you picked by the power outlet. That's awesome. Which might be a pretty good confirmation for yours. Amen. Your situation, that's awesome. It's the chances that two sisters pick the same stone. Tom, come on up here, bud. I'm new, and I'm old, <laughs> and many, of, well, actually, I don't know any of you, um, I've met, Pastor and I met, and had a nice conversation, um, I think my stone, I drive truck, so I'm not here very much, my stone it's over here, out of the way. Because, as everybody knows, God is our, our stone. He's the one that we need to look at. Amen. Very good, Tom. That's awesome. We just all got to get out of the way, don't we? Amen. I like that. This is fun, Daniel. This was a good idea. <laughs> um, so mine is right here um, it really stuck out to me because kind of like Jeff it looks broken at first but then I was thinking that wasn't like meant to be broken it was a piece that's added together and that may not be that may be like some extra cement but if you can see this little piece on top this stone is proud to hold this on top and some people might look at this and think it's kind of ugly, um, but this stone is proud to hold this piece on top. And in my life, I've been through a lot, and I've, um, I've been, I've made bad choices. I've had things happen in my life, um, and some people might look at it and think that I should be ashamed, or the experiences I've been through has made my life ugly. But I know that God gave me those experiences and put those people in my life for reasons. And I'm proud that I've had those experiences because it's made me who I am. And I'm proud to hold it and carry it. Very good. Awesome. All right. We got them coming now. <laughs> well, well, ladies first. Peyton won't mind, will you? Go ahead, bud. Hey, sit right here. You're next. I was sitting back there, and I picked this one because it was kind of in the middle and it's really dark but whether or not I've known it my entire life God has been with me whether I know it or not he's always been there he's been at the center of my life Amen. all of my life Amen. that's awesome good job I like that hey I got one under 25 I got one under 20 <laughs> I got one under 16 I think. <laughs> 13. 13 the rock I chose is right here it's out of a place it doesn't really look like it should be there it's small but that doesn't really matter because it's different and God called us to be set apart and different and that's why I chose that one nice. that's a good one man very good one that's awesome you know and it's all the small different individual ones that makes the whole wall amen I was sitting there thinking, uh, John and Chris Orvick probably saying that every one of them's my stone. We're the one, we laid them. <laughs> John and Chris did most of that. I think they did all of it. I think they had a little bit of help. Yes, ma'am. I 
Huh? Well, I'm going to share a rock with Glendella. <clears throat> because this rock means a lot. As long as I can remember, I've been in church. And um, the top represents Christ. But if I count down... There's four, and I have four children. And for 38 years, I had a purpose to take care of them. But they're no longer there. And I had to find a purpose. And in one week, my four children called to say, Mom, I need you to do this. Mom, I need you to do that. Mom. Can you do this? Mom, can you bake this? So that's four. But four has been such a significant number in my life. I was the fourth child. Bill was the fourth child. I was married on the fourth. So four is such a wonderful number for me. But this rock says, you have a purpose. You're not done. Keep going. I told him to help me down, just in case. (laughs) (laughs) One I picked is the very first one on here on the bottom. It's not very big. It's straight. It's plumb. And there's a short angle on one end. I helped put the first few nails in this building. I just had retired from the city of Willow, and I knew I wasn't retired yet, because I knew I had to help build, get, help him build, uh, frame this building. In. So I always looking down, make sure it's straight, plumb. And as I look down the hallways, it's a straight, narrow way. And that's the way God is, and I hope to keep going that way. Are you heading up? I thought I saw you heading this way. All right. Who's next? Miss Stephanie. I tried to find the one I was looking at the whole time. They look different up here. <laughs> this is mine here. Um, it's worn in the middle, and I've had struggles in my life. I've lost people very close to me. But the thing that stood out is all of the stones that are below it holding me up and the stones above it that are guiding me where I need to go. Excellent. Man, I didn't know we had so many good preachers in this place. That's awesome. Very good. Anyone else? Okay, give it a go, Mike. Oh, help me too. I'm uh, not microphone trained, so bear with me. Since the very first time we came in this church, I'm a nitpicker when it comes to construction. I will find any flaw, and I've been drawn right here. So for me to have my stone picked out before this ever happened is something in itself. But if that stone would have been shaped different from the get-go, the rest of it would have been straighter. But it's where it's at because that's where God wanted it, and being tied to all the other stones, it's now stronger. Now I'm going to realize how crooked that is from now on. But <laughs> no, that's good, Micah. Yeah, <laughs> Chris, that's not my stone. I didn't lay that one. That must have been John. He's not here to defend himself. <laughs> you know, when I uh, first started laying out the design for this church, and I, I wanted—I didn't want just an old boxy, cookie cutter church. I wanted something with some contour. I wanted it to be a little bit different. I wanted a, a round stage and. And uh, never thought when I thought oh, I'd like to put some stacked stone on that thing. Never thought it would turn into something like this and what it's representing for us here today. Amen. We're visual people. God created us to be visual, right? We see something and it. That's what Jesus taught that way, right? Jesus hadn't weighed take a handful of grain and say this is like the kingdom of God, right? And then and then every time you saw a thing, a handful of grain, you thought of the kingdom of God. As he's, we're visual people. I know that every time I see that little, this is, this is going to work. 
I, I know I spend enough time here, and I, and I walk up here and I pray, and every time I see that little stone, I'm going to think how small I am and how big God is. Amen. What his plan is that this church is not built upon Dennis Walton. This church is built upon Jesus Christ. Amen. And him crucified and what he did for us at the cross. It's all for the glory of God. Amen. Anyone else real quick? I, I don't want to leave somebody out if you had something. Oh, go ahead. He's worked up the nerve. I know you, you'll, you'll keep the nerve. So, This one right here, it represents, it represents me because I've always been trying to help other people. And these two stones under here are my two best friends who are always trying to help me when I don't, when I can't. When I can't go through something at school, they help me. Awesome, buddy. That's a good kid right there. Hey, Amen. This is a good one, too. He's raised right. Not a, not a kid. Mine's not that touching. Um, well, he's like, yeah, pick out a rock. And I'm like, there's 157 rocks up here. Like, how am I supposed to pick that one? I want that one. Um, it looks a lot different from where I'm sitting, but half of it, you can't really see it. This one right here. Half of it's like in and half of it's out. And uh, I got to thinking about it, like, why do I want that rock? And I kind of got to thinking, it's like, you know, for a long time I was half in and half out. And so I want that to be my rock because when I look at it, I want to be able to say, I don't want to be half in and half out anymore. Like, I want to be all in all the time. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we're breaking, for, we're breaking all the 25s and unders loose here. Getting dizzy now, I'm up here. Getting dizzy. <laughs> so, um, this is going to look different when I get up here, too. And, yeah, it doesn't look as wild from back here, or from up here. Um, this one here. Um, it looks okay up here, but uh, I got to thinking about it, and say you'll be kayaking on a river or going to a place on a creek or whatever. Um, sometimes you'll look up on a bluff, and you'll see this itty-bitty rock holding this five-ton rock, and you think, how in the world is that thing not falling on me right now, or whatever, you know? And sometimes you think the world's on top of you, and uh, the Lord has a way to keep you going. Very good, Jaron. That's awesome. Okay, so this is very out of my comfort zone. You guys have seen me sing up here, but I have Brady, and he kind of helps me out a little bit. But I really like this little bitty one because I'm pretty small and um, a lot of times I feel really little. <laughs> and, sorry, there's all these other rocks around it and they're different sizes <laughs> and I just have so many other people around me. <laughs> I have a great family. I have great future in-laws and everybody <laughs> and everybody else just around me is just, I, I started coming here when me and Brady first started dating and I've just gained so many new families and I have, you know, families that are blood family, soon will be blood family and just other people that I just look at and I just have such great relationships. <laughs> with all of you and I'm just grateful to have all of these rocks just just around me to help me get to the top one day. So thank you guys. Good job. Good job. Mm -hmm. Bullet. So 
prior to Garen coming up here, I had absolutely no idea which rock he had picked. He didn't know which rock I had picked, but ironically, the one that I had picked was right beside the one that he had. And the reason why I picked that particular rock is because when I come up on this stage, whether it be to sing or just to pray before media practice or whether I'm going to print prayer lists or whatever, I always come to up the stage on this side. And I picked that rock to remind me every time I come up and down how small and insignificant I am. As long, but as long as I have my heart in the right place, then God will use me to do something in his church. With your husband right next to you. Amen. I wasn't going to come up here, but I wasn't going to let Brady outdo me, so. Um, I actually picked the same rock that you picked, Cass, and I've been eyeballing it ever since he said to pick one. I told Caleb, she picked my rock. But it's kind of for the same reason. Um, it's small like me, and I, most of you know, I've uh, started a new teaching job, and it's been, it's been good, and I've had fun, but it's really scary. And it's still really scary, and I feel really out of my league sometimes. And I look young, so I have all these fears of, are people going to take me seriously as a teacher? And um, I've just felt like everybody else knows what they're doing but me, which I know that'll get better in time. But um, it's I picked that one because it's um, it seems really small, and I've felt really small lately, but it's still there, and it's filling a hole because if that wasn't there there would be a hole there and that hole needs to be filled so anyone else going once okay and this is going to look different from up here too I'm sure <clears throat> yeah, it totally looks different from up here. So, now I don't know what to do. <laughs> what I could see back there was that this was two separate rocks, that there was more to right there, and this was a rock of its own. And from back there, it looks like it's really the only one I could see that was vertical. And I just want that to represent me being my praise, my prayer, my worship to God going this way. That's awesome. I might even crack that stone just for you so there'll be two different pieces. <laughs> Not my norm either. I like to hide. I like to stay in the back. I don't want to be seen, um, but Glendella, all of I share your rock. Um, the reason why I picked that rock is because that rock stands out, and um, I want to, whenever I look up here, see this rock stand out to remind me how great God is, what he's done for me, how I've uh, grown from being in church as a kid, go through being a mom. Well, I guess as a wife first, and uh, that's a different chore. <laughs> uh, you find out why you remember you want to be home with mom and dad. <laughs> you got your secure feel. Um, but I, I want to look at that rock all the time and remember how great God has brought me from young to now, how he's worked in my kids, how he's worked in my marriage, and uh, I have a great mom and dad and a great brother and sister-in-law. <laughs> so but I, I just want to remember it. I don't, I don't want to forget because sometimes my life is totally crazy and uh, I got a wedding that's in... <laughs> 
hey, mom, I'm getting married in two months. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you got uh, Rusty. He's still in high school. We got football. We're going to do FFA. I got Dusty. He's in the Air Force. Uh, he flew the coop and flew wings and went clear to Japan <laughs> on me his first two years. And there's just so much that has happened in my life and it still is busy, and I catch myself sometimes um, forgetting God has everything in control, and God has done this, and he's helped me, and um, I just don't want to forget it, because sometimes I do, and I want to remember him, and he's also given me a husband, and that was actually 24 years September 20th, I believe, <laughs> and I look at where we was at, I look at where we've been, and where we are now, and I just want God to continue to work on that. Amen. I like how she said, God gave me great kids, and he gave me a husband. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. All right. Anybody else? We got time for another one or two. If anybody else got one, well, Daniel, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing this played out pretty much exactly the way you envisioned it. And I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Amen. Let's see how great they are. I. Uh, have realized though standing up here is that I spend way too much time preparing full sermons. Yeah, that you're genius. I just I just need to prepare starters and let everybody else do it from here because great thoughts, wonderful thoughts. And and like I said, we've done this and we've had fun with it. But but let the message of it. If there's one thing that God wants more from His people, and that's that we would trust Him more. Amen. That we would praise Him for what He's already done and that we would trust him for what he's gonna do. Is there anything more that God wants of his people? I believe that's it. Let's stand to our feet. Amen, as we reflect on everything we've said here, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray here in just a minute too for a couple needs that people need prayer for, but let's, let's take a second, because I like this idea, as we reflect on all of our individual um, testimonies and our individual thanksgiving for what God has done. Let's tell God how great he is for just a moment.